Yeah. Woo. <laughs> yeah. My friends, I have made my way to Oregon. Not Oregon. You could just say like organ, like an internal organ, and you're close enough. State number 49 on the 50 state shred. Holy moly, look at this map. It is completely filled in for the lower 48. Only one more state to go. Who knows if I'll actually make it there, but uh, Hawaii is waiting. Hawaii's waiting, but for now, we're in Oregon. They call it the Beaver State. No, I was not a finisher of the Southern Cross uh, mountain bike race. Sarah was though. I was. <laughs> I forgot to bring a beanie and it's so cold and my hair is way too wild to be uh, revealed on video right now. Good old Oregon, where there's a law that you can't pump your own gas. Nothing riles me up more in this world than not being able to pump my own gas, to having to pull up and wait for some schmo to come up and take forever when there's seven different people at the gas station. Ugh. If it was so great, you wouldn't need to make a law about it. So to make sure I don't have to buy gas in Oregon and I can boycott this stupid system, we're in Southern Oregon. I'm gonna go ride the Mountain of the Rogue. It's in the Ashland, Medford area. There's a lot of trails in this area. If you look at Trail Forks, it's a, a bountiful harvest and this is my first time riding in this area. We have arrived at the mountain and we've got Francois to show us around. He emailed me a few months ago talking about the different options in Southern Oregon and this just looked cool on the map. We've also got Nick with us here today. He was one of the original BLM guys that came out and made this thing possible. So we're going to hear about the story of the mountain throughout the ride. So I'll try to keep my face warm here by talking. It's a little chilly out right now. This is all BLM land. And the, the, the gist of the story, I'm sure I'm going to mess it up. But on the other side of this mountain, there were a couple bootleg free ride trails. And the BLM wanted to close them down make it more safe so kind of the deal they made was that there was this slice of land that had nothing on it let's build some mountain bike trails there so the rogue river area trail stewards the rogue rats were the guys who put together the plan for where they wanted the trails to go and kind of what this place would be and as they were doing that whole thing a fire tore through here like 10 years ago right as they were starting to kind of get the idea of this mountain being a, a whole mountain bike uh, trail system. And these are multi-use trails. You might see hikers out here every once in a while. Okay, we're warming up. I see the top of the mountain there. There's sun up there. We gotta get it. Francois was just telling me that this is a nice, easy climbing trail. And then there are nice, easy little, sh uh, you know, offshoots with green trails, blue trails, kind of the further up you climb, the harder it gets. So you can actually bring the family out, get them started. Francois has six kids, so that's a heck of a adventure getting all the kids out. <laughs> Put the sunscreen on. <laughs> Oh yeah. So Nick works for the BLM and back in the day when the project was just starting to get off the ground, he was sitting in his cubicle and the next guy over was talking about some mountain bike project they were working on. So he's like, hey, <laughs> get me on this. Let's, let's do this. And as, as it happened, he actually got to get on the project and he spent a ton of time out here flagging all these trails it starts with a plan kind of a wish list and then you actually have to get out there and beat brush and see like oh that's not going to quite work let's let's reroute this around this and tons of planning environmental impact and then eventually cutting the earth so nick was just telling me the biggest challenge they have out here is the poison oak and having volunteers come out to brush back or just you know build a little a realignment on the trail and there just happens to be a ton of poison oak and you know they're allergic to it and they get breakouts so just trying to find a <laughs> we need a vaccine I think that's what we need 
So they were talking up Sasquatch so much we had to hit it. Whoa. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <Whoa. laughs> oh, the cool breeze feels good now. I'm gonna be frozen at the bottom. Wow! <laughs> Hairpin! <laughs> Supposedly this looks like a Sasquatch on the map as well. I gotta double check that. Wow! <laughs> no skidding! <laughs> yeah! <Woo. laughs> yeah! Whoa! <laughs> One foot down. Oh! One branch in the face. All right. Three more. <laughs> Two more. <laughs> oh, got a little squirrely. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Wow. This is so full. This is like one of the blind turns where if people are climbing up it, you got to watch out. Oh, so good. Endless. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah oh. Isn't gravity such an amazing thing? Oh. Shout out to gravity <laughs> for making this ride possible. Yeah. And I was like, that wasn't that yeah. <laughs> so now we're back on Rat Pack, the climbing trail. I think that was totally worth it. Whatever elevation we just gave up was so minimal compared to the level of fun. That was so good. Francois said his number one wildlife sighting out here has been skunk. <laughs> and they won't get off the trail. They just <laughs> get out of the way. They know they're in a dominant position. <laughs> a little spooky out here on Halloween. <laughs> Super cool. 1300 feet from the bottom to the top. Forgot about the freeway noise. Nick was talking about that. You get on the other side and it just disappears. This is the town of Rogue River right below with the Rogue River running through Grants Pass on the other side of the pass. Oh, that's so neat. So Nick, the BLM has millions and millions of acres. What, why build trails? Like what, are they mandated to build trails? Do they want recreation? Well, we, we have um, a mandate to provide recreational opportunities. And you know, we, the reason we kind of went with this project is because we don't we didn't really have any like like specific trails i mean yeah we allowed bikes on certain trails but we didn't have anything specific it was kind of building up it was in the era of the original build out of like sandy ridge and portland area and so it's it's this new thing that we had started doing with imba and so you know the momentum started flowing when we started talking to the groups and then got imba involved and it just kind of started snowballing all right, Nick's gonna lead us down Bob and Weave, one of the newer trails. Oh yeah. Whoa, it's tight. Oh, he's shreddy. Whoa, it's a little 
loose. Oh, root over, okay. That's what he was talking about. They're gnarly. Oh wait, gnarly is only uphill. They're gnarly. It's downhill. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This is like on your toes. Oh, oh. You can see where a hundred people oh, have gone off the trail there. <laughs> oh man, this is the black trail. What's the double black gonna look like? Well, underneath, we're bobbing, we're weaving. Nice. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Over the top. Couldn't quite get the bike down. <laughs> All right, reset. Nice, that's where I crashed. <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's scary. <laughs> oh. Wow. Of course, the man who laid it out is going to just cakewalk through this whole thing. Woo. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Ooh, a trick or treat. All right. It's scary. Wow, my confidence level is zero. But I did it. Oh, man. <laughs> Get in where you fit in. <sighs> oh <God>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mother of God. No way. Not a chance. It took me three times to hit this one. Oh. It's so hard for me to just let off the brakes and let it go. Nice. <laughs> wow. Damn. I'm like just so uh, not confident on those tough switchbacks now since I fell the first time, but totally had it. Oh, there we go. Oh man, yeah, super cool. Yeah. Oh, just when I, <laughs> confidence back to zero. <sighs> Celebrated way too early. Whoa. <laughs> nice ride. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Cool. Oh, Nick said this was his vision when he was laying out this trail to have a trail that was quite difficult that you couldn't sleep on, that you were fully engaged, and oh, you did it, man. You did it. <laughs> That was an adventure, holy moly. Really well done, really well built. Ah, but now we're gonna be on the dark blue freewheel. Kind of a bark, bike parky, jumpy trail. And I am the worst at jumps, so I will bring up the rear. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
Oh yeah, this is good. This is uh, my level so far. Uh-oh. Yeah, <laughs> not quite. Oh, shark fin. <laughs> nice. Oh yeah, that one did. That one went. Whoa. <laughs> well, it's fall here, but it may be winter where you're living. So if you ever want to check out longer videos while you stay bike fit on the trainer, check out my Patreon page. I have thousands of hours of uh, my old videos, my new videos, extended cuts, early stuff. That's how I keep my channel going is people like you supporting the channel for three bucks a month. Woo Ad free. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Wow, there we go, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a cool one. Nice. Wow, perfect. Ah, someday. Oh man. <laughs> That's amazing, the level of stuff they've built here. Bravo. I think it's pretty easy to be like, oh no, we don't want to build anything that somebody could get hurt on. Or you could build something to the level of the riders in your community and they'll enjoy it so much. Parking lot is nice and busy now. Nice job, man. Big ol' hitters. Yeah. <laughs> Those last shows are super fun. Yeah. I gotta head out. It's Halloween. Thank you, man. Like yeah. Halloween. Get your costume going. So that was a full pull, top to bottom. Now we're going back, bottom to top. Maybe not all the way to the top, but we're gonna get a few more runs in. I am very impressed. This is so cool. Francois said I picked the best weekend. Weather is so perfect right now. Last weekend, it was uh, bitterly cold and wet from the fog, like 30 degrees. And next weekend, it's gonna snow. So, <laughs> got in just in time. So Francois was saying that he moved from the Bay Area 16 years ago up here. And back then, very, very few mountain bikers. And it's just so cool to see the sport take off and so many people get into it. And obviously, preaching to the choir, but it's the best way to get fit, best way to have fun, best way to make friends, best way to see another place that maybe isn't that far up the road from you. Yeah. Woo <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> nice. So much more forgiving. <laughs> I feel like a mountain biker again. Whoa. Woo. Nice. Nick was telling us that the problem is not the funding. They can find funding, but the trails, they, the plan has to be in place. It has to be what they call shovel ready. All the environmental assessments, all the easements, all the, the red tape has to be all cut through. But if you can cut through all the red tape and get all that plan going, there's grant money, there's other money. Stuff just comes together if you can get it shovel ready. So you really gotta be political. You gotta have people ready on your mountain bike club that can deal with red tape. <laughs> Baby jumps all day. Oh, 
what a great place to learn on have all these trails yeah wow oh wow that was a huge one he got it whoa yeah <laughs> yeah, sweet. What a great representation of Oregon. I thought that was super cool. Man, did it right. What a cool little place. They were telling me it started with just parking off the side of the road down here. Then this was a gravel lot and now it's a paved lot. And now they've kind of outgrown the lot because everyone drives big old trucks and you can barely uh, get through and back out. It's really difficult to, to make it around the parking lot. So it's, everything is a journey. It's uh, you crawl, you walk, and then you run. So everything is one step at a time here. After the ride, we went down to Bocce's, right down the street, right from the trails. It's super easy, picked up a couple pizzas. I got the pepperoni, Sarah got the white pizza. And now we're here at the boat launch uh, behind us and people are coming in, putting their boats in and we got this perfect little river spot for our little meal. It's awesome. How much travel you got in that thing? 170 mil. That looks like more than that. It's, it's like downhill. 210. It's my downhill rocker. <laughs> <laughs> I just finally bought a second pod rocker. Sarah said this was the thing that endeared me to her immediately. <laughs> that I had a really nice <laughs> camp true. chair. Even his chair is of suspension. <laughs> Sealed the deal. <laughs> we were driving down the highway here and saw a sign that said uh, Chasm of the Rogue. Earlier we were at the Mountain of the Rogue, now we're at the Chasm of the Rogue. This is amazing. This is like such a perfect natural beauty, super easy on and off the little highway here. And uh, they got bathrooms and stuff, so it's just a nice little perfect detour. Way better than Mount Rushmore, I'll tell you that much. Whoops, it's called the Rogue Gorge, actually, as the sign said when we walked in. Action. Oh, man. Look at this. Don't pick your nose, please. We took a little detour on the way back home, just a couple hours out of the way to Crater Lake. This is really, really beautiful. I've never been here before. So many cool stats. It used to be a volcano called Mount Manza, Manzana, what? Manzana. No, I don't think it was Manzana. Ma Ma Mazana? Mazana. Mazama. 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 M-A-Z-A-M-A. -A. We got it, Mount Mazama. It was 12,000 feet tall. It erupted 7,700 years ago, the biggest eruption in America in the past half a million years. It created this giant caldera, which now has the deepest lake in America, 1,900 feet deep. This whole thing six miles across. These signs are really good. I learned all this on the signs just five seconds ago. Mazama. Quite a fun full day here in Oregon. All these places I've never seen before even though it's not that far from where I live in the Bay Area. Man, do me a favor. Go out, ride something new. And maybe I'll see you on the trail.